Welcome back to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. The politics lead now. It may have been less than one week ago, but those 2014 midterm elections seem like ancient history, frankly. Buzz already in the air surrounding the potential 2016 presidential candidates. Will Mitt Romney run? Could there be a dynasty face-off with another Clinton v. Bush fight for the White House? This weekend, former President George W. Bush weighed in on the possibility of his little brother Jeb throwing his hat into the ring. I think it's 50-50. Look, he, he and I um, are very close. On the other hand, he's not here knocking on my door, you know, agonizing about the decision. He, he knows exactly, uh, uh, you know, the ramifications on family, for example. He's seen his dad and his brother uh, go through the presidency. I would give it a, I'd give it a toss-up. Can the Republican Party keep the momentum going heading into 2016? Joining me now, the man who clinched the Senate majority for Republicans last week, winning the most expensive Senate race in world history, North Carolina, Senator-elect Tom Tillis. Congress uh, Senator, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I appreciate it, and congratulations. Thanks for having me. So, Senator-elect, uh, Jeb Bush endorsed you in your Senate campaign. Care to return the favor if he decides to run? You know, there's a lot of good candidates or a lot of potential candidates that are thinking about it. Governor Bush is a very impressive leader. He had a great reputation down in Florida. A uh, number of other people being talked about have got to make those decisions, and then, then we'll, we'll, we'll figure out where to go from there. As soon as you're sworn in, maybe even before, uh, one of the first issues you're going to have to deal with is immigration. Uh, a year ago at the Bush Library, Jeb Bush said that many who come to America illegally do so uh, as an act of love for their children and should be treated differently, he suggested, than those who overstay their visas. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I think that what we need to do is stay focused on exactly what we talked about during the campaign. First and foremost, seal the border. Then talk about what you do once you've stabilized the growth of the population. And I think uh, I'll take uh, Governor Bush's uh, comments at face value. I think it makes sense. I think Republicans need to have a, a, a tone that we set that will convince everybody that immigration reform is necessary, but it starts with sealing the border. Speaking of tones, there's a lot of debate here in Washington, D.C. about what exactly last Tuesday's election meant. Do you think uh, that you were elected to stop President Obama and his agenda, or do you think you were uh, elected to, to reach across the aisle and find common ground? I think I was elected to produce results. I believe that the American people are tired of Congress not functioning. I think that still top of mind more than any issue is jobs in the economy, getting regulatory changes in place to take burdens off of businesses, getting tax policies that make sense, make it more likely that businesses will invest and grow jobs. That's what American people want to see. They're just tired of seeing bills come from the House and die in the Senate. They want to see results. and. We owe it to the American people not to go up there and be a different brand of inaction. We need to produce results, and we need to do it quickly. It's the smartest thing we can do to lay the groundwork for 2016. Speaking of uh, regulations and taxes, let's talk about uh, Obamacare, which you talked about a lot on the campaign trail. You've said one of the Senate goals moving forward should be to repeal it. A video recently surfaced of Jonathan Gruber from MIT, who's one of the architects of Obamacare. I, I want you to listen to what he said about how the bill was passed and get your reaction. You get a law which said healthy people are going to pay in. It made explicit the healthy people pay in and sick people get money. It would not have passed. Okay, just like the people, transparent lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And you know, it's the second best argument. Look, I wish Mark was right. We can make it all transparent. But I'd rather have this law than not. Senator-elect, your response? Well, that sounds like the uh, means justifies the uh, the ends, or the ends justify the means. I'm sorry. That, that is exactly what the American people are tired of. They want transparency. They want to be uh, treated with respect. We did a lot of very difficult bills since I've been Speaker of the House. Some of them were controversial on both sides of the ideological spectrum. But we took the time to explain it to people and not do this sort of bob and weave. If the American people really knew the effects of Obamacare, or the Affordable Care Act, I don't think it would have passed. What may have happened is a bill that would be sustainable. What we have now is a bill that, that either must be repealed or substantially replaced. 
You won the most expensive Senate race in history. Looking back, more than $100 million. Does that embarrass you? Uh, are you proud of it? What's your feeling about it? Well, we're not surprised by it. Uh, as late as uh, July of last year, or as early as July of last year, we estimated that it would be somewhere between 70 and $90 million. And much of that was spent by uh, my opponent and, uh, and her supporters. But it, it's just a testament to the fact that North Carolina is a swing state, voted for Obama in 2008, for Romney in 2012. It will continue to be a state that will be very expensive, in part because of its importance in deciding elections, Senate and national elections. Uh, but it's also just, it's a large state now. It's the ninth most populous. We have very expensive media markets. So there are a variety of reasons why it was the most expensive state. Senator-elect Tom Tillis, thank you and congratulations again. Thank you, Jeff.